Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin, or should I say How to Potty Train Your Gavin? <laughs> happy April Fool's Day. And if you're not watching this on April Fool's, happy day. The purpose of this video is to give you some quick and easy recommendations. Essentially, books you can read in one shitting. And <laughs> I would... <laughs> I would like to thank Beth from Fairy Tale Reads on Instagram for the name. Honestly, I've been wanting to do this video since August 2021, ever since Beth said the name during a live show. Firstly as well, I've never filmed in the bathroom before, so I don't know how this is gonna look, how it's gonna sound. Let's roll with it. <laughs> God damn it. So yes, let's get into the quick... So yes, let's get into the quick and easy book recommendations. Firstly, I have Den of Vipers. And you're probably asking, Gavin, how long do I need to be on the toilet in order to read all of this? Well, my answer is simple. Just day and effort and wipe your ass with it. That's all you need to do. It has other uses. I don't know about you guys, but usually when I'm on the toilet, I think back at the past. I think about my childhood, what I went through. <laughs> No, just those thoughts that creep into your head while you've got like a minute to yourself. So why not make those memories happy memories and go down the route of reading books that are based on your favourite TV shows and films. So for instance, we have a little bit of Charmed, you know, Charmed is one of my favourite TV shows. What about Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Honestly, like these are so short, you could literally read these in one shit. Ghost Whisperer, The New Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley, and there have been books made from almost every single TV show we can think of, especially back in the day, back in my day, when we had things like Buffy as well and Supernatural, One Tree Hill. Are there actually One Tree Hill books? I need to check this out. I actually don't know if there is any One Tree Hill books, but if there is, I'm getting them all. <gasps> is this real? What? Oh. That just literally proves that almost any sort of 90s or 2000s TV show had a book series. There's also the Lizzie McGuire mysteries, which I only just recently found out thanks to Jamie. And they're always so super short, so you can read them quick and easy, so you will be able to get through them very quickly. And also, I would genuinely recommend reading some Animorphs books. If you have some random ones that are just on your shelf from when you were a kid, pick one out, read it. You don't actually really have to read them in order. I mean, preferable, preferable, but most of the books have really random storylines. And there were very few books that kind of touched on things in the past and that had happened before in the series. But yeah, just pick a random one off the shelf, give it a read. This one's the first one, The Invasion. It does set up the story brilliantly, so if you do have the first one, maybe read that one and then dip into some of the other ones. But a really enjoyable series nonetheless. And again, nostalgia for the win. Okay, one that I don't think a lot of people will actually enjoy, but I did, is The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers. This one is a bit of a disturbing book. It is a classic as well. It was written in the early 1900s, I believe. It might be in late 1800s, but this is a very weird, gothic novel. <laughs> it is a little bit hard to describe, but essentially there is this play that drives people mad. And when people read this play, weird things happen, but you don't really see it. You never actually really find out what the play is truly, truly about. And whenever they get to the second act or when they're reading it, you genuinely don't know what in the world is going on. You barely get told anything. And that kind of fear of the unknown and not knowing everything is something that really added to this for me. It is super, super short. And there's actually four stories that only connect through this cursed play. So that made it even more interesting and it'll probably make it that much more of a faster read for you. So incredibly weird and you really just have to kind of take it for what it is. Also realize that it is a bit of an older book. So you might end up getting bored by it, but I wasn't. I was trying to read between the lines and it made it very interesting. It will definitely make your time shitting that more interesting too. Next, I have Come Closer by Sarah Gran, and this one, I mean, you might need two visits to the toilet to read this one, but this was such a surprising read for me when I read it last year. It is very disturbing in all the right places. It's not overtly scary or terrifying, but I think what is most terrifying about this is the idea of the possession. So our main character is being possessed and she is slowly starting to realize that she is becoming possessed and whatever demon is possessing her is making her do things that are terrifying. Just that idea of maybe ever having that happen to me is something that got under my skin. There were several moments that got under my skin in this one as well. And just to see that progression of this very hopeless situation go from kind of smaller things to 
terrifying things. It was such a natural and fun progression. This was a surprise and read for me, so it might be a surprise for you. Sometimes I like to cry when I'm on the toilet, and in order to really get the tears flowing, I would recommend And Every Morning The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Bachman. And oh, honestly, this one was tore my heart asunder. Again, extremely, extremely short. But this one is essentially about Grandpa and Noah. They are talking and Grandpa is losing his memory because he has Alzheimer's. And Noah is a young kid and he is taking it all in. He's asking questions and it goes through that kind of like story. And it's just so subtle and just so beautiful and moving that I honestly feel like I'm doing a bit of a disservice by recommending this one on the toilet. But the whole general idea of this video was for quick and easy reads. This is quick. And is it an easy read? Not quite. I don't think it's an easy read. It's very hard to read at points. I mean, it won't make everyone cry, but it definitely made me feel very, very sad. So if you can get your hands on any kind of novella, you're sorted. And this is a novella that I would wholeheartedly recommend. In terms of manga, I am obsessed now with the Kingdom Hearts manga. Absolutely love it. Essentially follows Sora, Donald and Goofy. They travel to different Disney worlds in order to find King Mickey and to find Sora's friends, Riku and Kairi, who he lost when he lost his home. It's so good. It is so brilliant. And I read these very recently. And you know, I love the video game series, Kingdom Hearts, my favorite video game series of all time. And I was pleasantly surprised by how amazing the manga is. It added little bits of character into it. It does omit some of the things that happened in the video game series, but it keeps all of the important things. It just adds a little bit more flair to what is in here. It has still that adventurous aspect of it where we have them going to different Disney worlds, meeting different Disney characters and Disney villains. It's so, so good. So good, it made me laugh out loud a lot of the times. So this is the first one, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix Volumes 1 and 2, and there are so many more as well, which I cannot wait to get my hands on. Just to up the age, you know, quite dramatically, we have Dick Fight Island Volume 1 by Reben Ike. I adored this book. It's just so different. It follows, like, clans of men on this island who have to have dick fights in order to become king of the island, essentially. And everybody watches them in this coliseum layout, and they give commentary on it, and it's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. This is for the romance lovers. This is my first ever yaoi and it might have been actually my first ever manga now I'm trying to remember. I think this is my first ever manga. Some great characters in here, characters that you might end up falling head over heels in love with. Whether or not you want to fall in love with them while on the toilet is a different matter but for me I could read this anywhere. I could read this on the toilet, in the bath, in public. Don't care. It's quick, it's easy, and I cannot wait for volume two. Put the age range down again. We have The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag. I adored this when I read it. This is a graphic novel. So this one follows Asta and his family's born with magic. All of the boys have shape-shifting abilities and all the girls become witches. But Asta wants to become a witch. Asta ends up spying on the witchy lessons that the girls learn in order to try and become a witch himself. There is a bigger plot going on as well. There are boys going missing and something is out there, something very terrifying. It's just so good and I adore adore the art style of this too. Molly Knox Ostertag, incredible. It also reminds me of The Owl House on Disney Channel slash Disney Plus. Love The Owl House so, so much. So this is a good one if you enjoy Owl House. Perfect. So just some middle grades to end off and then because middle grade is quick and easy to read and that's why I love reading them so much. So firstly, I have the Rainbow Grey series by Laura Ellen Anderson. Also illustrated by Laura Ellen Anderson as well, just to make that read a little bit quicker. So if you're turtle heading, you can guarantee that you'll probably finish this by the time it comes out. The Rainbow Grey series follows Ray Grey, who was born without powers, but she ends up taking a forbidden expedition to Earth in order to find rainbow magic, which has been extinct for thousands of years. And she ends up getting transformed into a rainbow grey. And she lives in the Weatherlands. Everyone has weather magic there. It's fantastic. It is an incredible series. It is so adventurous, heartwarming. This will add a touch of class to your toilet bricks. It is also fitting that there is a character in here based off me called Gusty Gavin. And consider I'm sitting on the toilet right now. Couldn't be more apt. The Lewis Bonneville series by John Belez is a little bit dated. However, very fun to read and extremely short as well. You've probably seen the film with Jack Black and Kate Blanchett called The House with the Clock in Its Walls. This is the first book with the same name. And I just love the story of it, quite honestly. We follow Lewis who goes to live with his uncle who lives next door to Mrs. Zimmerman, who is a witch. And Lewis ends up learning magic. And it's such a nice series. I mean, again, it is dated. You can really tell it's dated. But if you want, you could read the entire 12 book series in 12 shittings, essentially. And if you need to hit that Goodreads goal, 
this is a series for you. And finally, honestly, I love this book so much. It's A Secret of Birds and Bone by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. In fact, I would recommend anything by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, like literally everything actually. They are all pretty much quick and easy to read, well, all of her middle grades. And Julia and the Shark is one of my favourite books, but I've been talking about that one a lot recently, so I do want to go back to this one and talk about how much I love this one, because this came out a couple of years ago. It is quite gothic and so atmospheric and also short. We follow Sophia and her brother. Their mother is a bone builder and she uses the bones of the loved ones of people who come to her in order to make like trinkets and stuff for them. However, Sophia's mum is arrested and Sophia and her brother get taken to an orphanage, which is a little bit creepy. And she must navigate the city of Siena and its catacombs in order to escape with her brother. It's just so good. It is so good. I actually have the hardback version of it as well, but I love this cover so much. And you know, I feel like any middle read is perfect for a quick and easy read. So many of them out there that you could literally read in one shitten and just absolutely fall in love. I would love to try and build up more of a catalogue of quick and easy books so that I can recommend them. So if you have any recommendations for me, please let me know in the comments down below. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you haven't already. A huge thank you to my patrons as well because I love you all so, so much. And if you want to join my Patreon, I have that and a lot of social media links in the description box. If you want to join or follow me on any of those. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye. The video is still filming one shit, am I right? <laughs>